I'm sure that most model builders have had this predicament before. I want to do a terrain project. I don't know what to build next. So here I am sit sitting in the parking lot at the local hardware store. I'm gonna go in, take a look around, see what I can come up with, and uh, maybe we can build something as a result. So let's go through the creative process together on this. So when I got back from the store, I had this. It's a natural fiber mat that you buy by the foot. I had to get a salesperson at the store to cut it for me. She was none too keen to be on video. So I had to wait till I got back here to show everybody. But it's this natural fiber, coconut fiber apparently. And it comes apart in these clumps like this. So I thought, this was good inspiration for making maybe a garden or something with crops. So with that in mind, I got down to building a base for it and I decided I was gonna build a piece of terrain to show this fibrous material off. So without any further ado, let's get to building a garden. As always, I start the project by planning out a base. So I decided I'm gonna make a cardboard base it's easy and basically free. So I get out a sheet of cardboard and draw a rough outline of the plan on it. And I decide to make this garden probably about 10 inches long by roughly nine inches wide. After drawing it out, I go ahead and cut it out. Then next I cut out another piece, almost exactly the same, but a little smaller to leave a rim around the edge and I also cut it so the grain of the cardboard is going in the other direction. Now I grab my hot glue and glue them together. And by doing this, I've got the cardboard going in opposite directions at right angles to each other, and this makes the base a lot stronger. Grabbing some cutoffs of pink styrofoam, I go ahead and hot glue them to the base, and I just stick down some jagged pieces here and there, more or less at random at the base, just to build a little interest. I'll paint these up to form rocks later. Moving on, I get out my masking tape, and I put pieces of it down around the rim of the base to seal off the edges of the grain and to smooth out the lip around the side of the terrain between the two cardboard layers. To make the surface of the garden itself where I'll plant the crops, I get a, a piece of black foam core and putting it down on top of the base, I measure it out so that it fits and then cut it so that I can sit it on the top of the cardboard base itself. Now to make the paper backing on the foam easier to remove, I get out a dish of water and I put the foam in it to soak. While the foam core soaks, it's a good time to get started on the crops. So I get out the coconut fiber mat and start peeling pieces of it off. Then I lay a section down. I cut it to be a good height for the terrain, in this case about 1 100 scale. Once I get it cut, I put it back on my work surface and taking a wire brush, I brush it a bit until the fibers release. And then using my fingers, I tease the fibers apart. Using my glue gun, I go to the bottom of each section of fibers and I apply a dab of glue and then after it's cooled for a second, I take my fingers and massage it into the stock. This reinforces it at the bottom and will make it easier to insert into the base. Now I decided these crops would be cool and all, 
but they probably wouldn't add that much color. So I decided to go ahead and make some cabbages or other vegetables I could plant in the garden. I started by taking a sheet of plain paper and cutting it into small strips. Then after I got a strip cut off, I could subdivide the strip into maybe thirds and roll each one into a small coil. After the coil is made, I grab a sheet of acetate, which is just clear plastic packaging, and laying down a bead of hot glue, push the coil into the glue. Once the glue is set, I grab a knife and cut downwards into each coil, dividing it into four quarters. Then taking my fingers, I gently peel back each of the sections, revealing lots of different little petals to form sort of a flower or a plant. When I had made a good number of cabbages, I took out some green ink and using a pipette, deposited a large blob of ink on top of each one, enough to dye the whole plant green. While the ink was drying on the vegetables, I decided that the foam had been soaking long enough so I pulled it out of the water and using my fingers peeled back the paper covering on it, revealing the foam below. Then I grabbed my hot glue gun and the base I'd made and glued the top of the garden bed down to the top of the base. To make sure that the sides of the garden bed sat flush with the top of the base, I took my file and rounded off the sides. At this point I figured it'd probably be a good idea to put a fence around the garden, so I went ahead and started to build one. I took out two lengths of thin wood dowel and cut them to the length of each fence side. So on the sides it was roughly 18 inches and to cap the ends it was about 12 inches. I then measured these out so that every three centimeters I would attach an upright from a matchstick. I then glued the matchsticks to the uprights so that I had two rails between each fence post and I put the fence posts on either side of the dowels. Once I had enough lengths of fence made, I took out my hot glue gun and just went ahead and glued each fence into place. To help establish a sense of scale, I went ahead and put some small details down. I used some matchstick cutoffs to make a pile of lumber. I put down some tools around the lumber pile. I cut out some old oil cans and made some fuel drums and I glued some cut off lengths of basswood here and there to imply fallen branches and scattered debris. With the details done it was now time to texture the base. So the first thing I did was pour out some Mod Podge into a cup and add some water and a little bit of black paint to it just to tint it so I could pre-shade with it. Then I took this and began spreading it down on the base quite heavily with a brush. Working in patches, I went ahead and sprinkled a mixture of about 80% sand to 20% kitty litter on any of the spots where I'd put down the Mod Podge. Then to help seal the grit down, I poured out some rubbing alcohol and applied it to the top of the grit with a pipette and then went back over all these areas with some more watered down Mod Podge and just applied it over the top. The rubbing alcohol helps break the surface tension of the second layer of glue which allows it spread down in amongst the grit and it, this promotes a really strong solid bond. The next morning when the glue had all dried and all the grit was bonded down I took it out to the garage and I sprayed the whole thing with a layer of matte black paint. Now I had a base all finished and the grit was all stuck down, everything was primed and ready to go. All I needed to do now was move ahead and do the landscaping, plant the crops, and finish the painting. 
I bet you at this point, everybody's wondering how this is all gonna turn out. And the truth is, I don't know. <laughs> I've still got a lot of work to do to get this done. And frankly, I'm looking forward to seeing what the final outcome will be. But to see that, you'll have to wait till next week. I'd like to thank all of my viewers for watching. I really appreciate all your support. And if you haven't subscribed, I'd encourage you to so you don't have to miss out on any of the details. Until next time, remember to keep building life in miniature.